to Bethesda Baptist Church Kids Holiday Club on YouTube. It is so good to have you joining with us. Welcome back for the Easter weekend. So we're going to be here today, we're going to be here tomorrow, and we're also going to be here on Sunday. So three days of the Holiday Club. We're so pleased to have you with us. As you can see, I'm getting in the Easter mood. I'm really excited for this weekend. Now there's going to be lots of fun to do. There's going to be songs to listen to, there's going to be talks from the Bible to hear all about, there's going to be craft activities, lots of you will have the craft packs, there might even be a special appearance from Mr Bruce Flicks, there will be games. So we hope you have lots of fun and thanks for joining us. Bye! <laughs> Life can get us down Things that happen make us frown Slip on a banana skin Trip and fall into a bin Sometimes we just wonder why Things that happen make us cry We get ill or hurt ourselves But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other God is bigger God is strong Sometimes people make us sad Wind us up and make us mad Call us names or pull our hair Laugh about our underwear Sometimes we feel on our own Things that happen make us grow Nothing seems to go our way But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other our Easter holiday club. Now, it's a beautiful day outside. It's so sunny. And so I thought I would get my bag, fill it with all the stuff I need and go to the beach. But before I go, I thought we could play a game. And maybe you can see if you can guess what's in my beach bag. I tell you what, I bet that you can't guess all five things that I have in there. Okay, fine. How about I give you two clues, okay? I'll give you one and see if you can guess it, and then I'll give you a second one and see if you can guess it, and then I'll show you what it is. So see if you can guess it in just one clue, or if not, see if you can guess it in two. Okay, here we go. The first thing in my bag is soft. Do you know what it might be? The first thing in my bag is soft. That's your first clue. Your second clue, I'll need this when I come out of the sea. Okay, that's your second clue. I'll need this when I come out of the sea. You got any idea what it might be? The answer is a towel. It's my towel. 
Now I'm definitely gonna need this to dry myself off when I come out of the sea. So that's the first thing in my beach bag. Did you get it in one clue or two? Well done if you got it in one, well done if you got it in two. Okay, the second thing in my beach bag is round. The second thing in my beach bag is round. That's your first clue. And your second clue is this thing in my beach bag that is round also bounces. It's round and it bounces. That must have given it away. The answer is a beach ball. And it's even a Peppa Pig one. Even better. It's a beach ball, so I'll be playing with that later. Okay, the third thing in my beach bag. Now, this is slimy. That's the third thing in my beach bag. There's your first clue. It's slimy. Any ideas what it might be? The second clue is that if you're going to be in the sun, you have to wear this. That's your second clue. If you're going to be in the sun, you have to to wear this. Do you know what it is? It's sun cream. Well done if you got that one right. The third thing in my beach bag is sun cream. Okay, the fourth thing in my beach bag. Okay, your clue. The fourth thing in my beach bag is you can put things in it. Mm, you can put things in it. Any idea what it might be? And your second clue is you can also build things with it. So clue number one, you can put things in it and two, you can build things with it. It's a bit tougher. Any ideas? Do you know what it might be? The fourth thing in my beach bag is a bucket and spade. Very good. You can put sand in it, you can put water in it and you can also build with it. Well done if you got that one right. Okay, my bag is, is pretty much empty. But the fifth thing in my beach bag, it's very small. It's very small, that's your first clue. And it goes on your face. That's your second clue. It goes on your face. Any ideas what it might be? It is sunglasses. You have to have them when you're going in the sun as well to protect your eyes. So we've got skin protection, eye protection, and things that we can play on the beach, and of course my towel. I've got my swimming costume on already, so I am all set. I hope that you guys managed to get most of those from clue number one, or if not clue number two. Well done guys, thanks for playing. So guys, we have got a really special new Easter treat this time round for our holiday club. We have done a one minute doorstep challenge with three different groups of people. So I went round and I knocked on their door and surprised them and they had one minute to answer three questions. Two of them are about Easter and the first one is just a fun little question to warm them up. If they can answer all three questions in one minute, then they won the doorstep challenge. So I hope you enjoy it. Hello! Hey! Surprise, <laughs> Sophie and Nathan. You're today's one minute doorstep challenge contestants. We have three questions for you to answer in one minute. Do you think you can do it? We do, and I'd just like to say we're deeply honoured as well. Oh good, you are very welcome. Well, I'll give you this tablet. You have seven seconds once I kick it off and then I'll ask you the questions. All right, here we go. Question number one. Would you rather eat a worm sandwich or fly soup? Definitely a worm sandwich. It's got to taste like chicken. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Question number two, what does Good Friday mean to you? Good Friday, well, it's really special. There's loads you could say, but I know that for me, Jesus died for my sins on the cross, and that's what we remember as Christians. So, I don't know if you need to add. I think one of the main things for me is that Christ died once over 2,000 years ago for my sin and for the sins of all those who trust in him. That's amazing. Thank you both. And question number three, 
Other than the Easter story, what's your second favourite part of Easter? Oh, well, I definitely have to say it's an Easter egg hunt. Excellent. And that's what we're doing on Saturday, so you've got that to look forward to. 12 seconds left. Nathan and Sophie, you have successfully completed the doorstep challenge. Congratulations. And look out for the prize in the post. my little wallabats and kangaroos and kingos and all that kind of thing. Right, it's great to have you. Bruce Flicks here and it's Good Friday today. Good Friday is kind of like a happy day but it's also a bit of a sad day. Do you know what else makes you happy and sad at the same time? Exercise! That's right, so it's time for us to do a bit of exercise. So it's time to get all that going, get these limbs flailing about, get up off the sofa. Oh yeah, it's time to do some exercise. So I'm gonna put the timer on for us here and it's time for us to go. Now, one of the things you always see around about the Easter time are the Easter time animals. That's right. Did you think of an Easter time animal? Oh, how many of you said bunny? 
because that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kick off with some bunny hops. You ready? One, two, three, go. Bunny hops. Oh, that's a bunny hop. You're going to get your bunny heels. There we go. Yeah. Keep hopping. Don't stop hopping. Keep hopping. Yeah. Got to use those, those toes and those legs. You're going to keep those hands up, make your ears. Keep bouncing up and down. Don't stop. Don't be a lazy bunny. The lazy bunny gets eaten by the fox. You want to be an energetic bunny. Oh, keep bouncing. Oh, excellent. Well done. Right, it's time now. My ears still there yesterday. Oh, okay, that's excellent. Can you think of another roost animal? I bet you can. Did you think of the chick? Oh, me too. So now we've got to run around picking and flapping our wings like a chick. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Those little bits of whatever it is they eat in the ground, never really know what they eat. Got little rocks and things. Yeah, like that little chicken from Moana. Just keeps eating the rocks. Okay, keep going. Flip those wings. Two essential motions for flapping the wing and the head. Oh, you're doing a great job. All my time has disappeared. I oh, can't see it anymore. Okay. Oh, well done. Great job. Now, we've got a few minutes left. And we've got to think of some other Easter animals. This is where it starts to get tricky. I'll give you a hint. They're in Australia. That's right. The platypus. Well done. I knew you'd get that one. All right, so what a platypus does is he flails his little arms about like that to swim and he wriggles his head around to get all the, all the stuff out of the mud. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. That's right, just don't headbutt anything. Keep a safe distance. And keep flailing around. Get that head really moving from side to side. And moving around your arms like this. That's right. Keep going, my excellent little platypi. Is that the plural? Oh, I don't know. One platypus, two. You tell me. Keep going. Keep going. Excellent. Oh, really good job, you guys. Now, the next Easter animal that we love to talk about over in uh, Australia is yet you guessed it, the kangaroo. So we're gonna do some more hops, but these are bigger hops and the little hops that we were doing. Are you ready? Big hops, let's go. Yeah. Big hops, gonna get down deep, and up, deep, and up, deep, and up. That's it. Nice big hops. See how high you can jump. Yeah, we're doing a great job. Oh, oh, well done. Starting to feel the bird. 10 seconds left, the final animal we need to consider is not from Australia, the Tasmania, the Tasmanian Devil. The Tasmanian Devil just spins around in a mad fury. Are you ready? Go! Oh, that, oh that's enough. Okay. Well done, everyone. That's enough for me. That's all from Bruce Flix for today. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye. Now, I don't know about you, but my favourite day of the week is a Saturday. I wonder what your favourite day of the week is. Maybe you love Fridays because it's the last day of school and the weekend's coming. Maybe you love Mondays because you get to go to school and you get to learn lots and you get to see your friends. Maybe Tuesday's your favourite day because it's football day. Or Wednesday because it's gymnastics. Or Friday because it's dance. Or well, Sunday, because you go to church. I wonder what your favorite day of the week is. Now, what day is it today? That's right, today is Friday. But today is a really, really special Friday. Today isn't just any old Friday. Today is Good Friday. 
Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes there's certain things that happen on a day that at the end of the day, I think, oh, today was a really good day. If you had a good day, what would you be doing in it? If you got to choose your perfect day, what kind of things would you do? Lovely ideas. I would probably go on a long walk. I would probably drink lots of tea. I'd probably get to see some friends or my family and I'd also get to eat some yummy foods. That to me would be a really, really good day. Maybe for you it might be playing some games, it might be playing Minecraft, it might be eating McDonald's, it might be watching your favourite film, it might be seeing your friends. Lots of things can make a good day. But today, Good Friday, we're going to find out why it is such a good Friday. But it might not be for the same reasons that we would think a day would be good. Now, some of you might have eaten these, or if you don't like them, you might have seen your grown-ups eating them. I have got one of my favourite things. I love having these for breakfast. I've got a hot cross bun, that's right. And on the top of it, you can see there is a cross. And today we're going to be finding out what the cross has to do with Good Friday and why the cross makes today such a Good Friday. I'm going to read from a Bible, it's a special children's Bible, so it helps us to understand it a little bit easier. And I'm going to read all about something that happened a long time ago, but that makes this special Friday such a good one. So that Jesus about a week ago, we remember a time when Jesus rode into a place called Jerusalem. He rode in on a donkey and everyone was waving branches because they thought he was so amazing. And they said, yeah, how the king. But some other people, they didn't really like him. They were jealous and they wanted to see him die. So now we're at the point in the story where we're going to find out a little bit more about that. So you're a king, are you? The Roman soldiers jeered then you'll need a crown and a robe. And they gave Jesus a crown, but it was made out of thorns. And they put a purple robe on him and they pretended to bow down to him. Your majesty, they said. They were just teasing him, mocking him. Then they whipped him and they spat on him. They didn't understand that this was the prince of life, the king of heaven and earth who had come to rescue them. The soldiers made him a sign, our king, and they nailed it to a wooden cross. They walked up a hill outside the city. Jesus carried the cross on his back. Jesus had never done any wrong, but they were going to kill him the way criminals were killed. They nailed Jesus to the cross. Father, forgive them, Jesus gasped. They don't understand what they're doing. You say you've come to rescue us, people shouted, but you can't even rescue yourself. But they were wrong. Jesus could have rescued himself. A legion of angels would have flown to his side if he'd called. If you were really the son of God, you could just climb down off that cross, they said. And of course they were right. Jesus could have just climbed down. Actually, he could have just walked, he could have just said a word and made it all stop. Like when he healed people and stilled the storm and fed thousands of people. But Jesus stayed. You see, they didn't understand. It wasn't the nails that kept Jesus there. It was love. Papa, Jesus cried frantically, searching the sky. Papa, where are you? Don't leave me. And for the first time, and the last, when he spoke, nothing happened. Just a horrible, endless silence. God didn't answer. He turned away from his boy. Tears rolled down Jesus' face. The face of the one who one day will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Even though it was the middle of the day, a dreadful darkness covered the face of the earth. The sun could not shine. The earth trembled and quaked. The great mountains shook. Rocks split in two. 
until it seemed that the whole world would break, that creation itself would tear apart. The full force of the storm of God's fierce anger at sin was coming down on his own son. Instead of his people, it was the only way God could destroy sin and not destroy his children whose hearts were filled with sin. Then Jesus shouted out in a loud voice, it is finished. And it was, he had done it. Jesus had rescued the whole world. Father, Jesus cried, I give you my life. And with a great sigh, he let himself die. Strange clouds and shadows filled the sky, purple, orange, black, like a bruise. So there we read the story about the very first Good Friday, about how Jesus died upon a cross, just like criminals, just like people who'd done wrong things. Except Jesus hadn't done any wrong. Jesus chose to be nailed to the cross through his hands, through his feet, not because he had done anything wrong, but because we do wrong. We think things we shouldn't think. We say things we shouldn't say. And we do things we shouldn't do. Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus is God. But because he loves us, he died on that cross. He let himself die. And he took on himself all of those bad things, all of that sin. And he died on that cross to forgive us. And that is why, even though it's a sad, sad story, even though Jesus had tears rolling down his face, that is why today is such a good Friday. Because no matter how hard we try, we always do things wrong, don't we? We always say things we shouldn't. We always think things we shouldn't. We always do things we shouldn't do. No matter how hard we try, we can't save ourselves. We can never be good enough. So that is why today is such a good Friday, because Jesus has saved us. Jesus died upon that cross to forgive us for all of those things. So as you're going about today, remembering that it's Friday, maybe your favourite day of the week, just remember that today is a really, really good Friday. Hi, we're going to sing together again. Now, one of the most wonderful things that God has done for us is take our sins far, far away, as far as the east is from the west. Let's see if my arms can go even wider. That's how far he's taken our sins away from us. Let's sing together.
it is craft time. So for those of you that have signed up, you will have had a bag like this delivered to your door. I hope you're enjoying having a little look to see the things that are in there and we will make good use of those over the weekend. For today's activity, you will need this section here. So you will see there's a bag filled with colorful tissue paper, black cards and a piece of paper with a cross on. Now, the idea for today's activity is based all about the cross, because we've been thinking, haven't we, about why the cross, how the cross, Jesus is dying on it, makes today such a good Friday. So as you're doing this activity, maybe you can think about that and remember how good that is. So carefully, what you need to do, get some scissors, maybe do a little snip across here, just one line, and then cut out the cross shape. Cut out the cross shape. Then with the cross that you've cut out, you can put that to one side. And then the rest of the piece of paper, you can put glue on it and stick it onto the black piece of paper. So all around the edge will be white and you'll have the cross in black showing. Then your job is to do a collage, a colorful collage using the tissue paper. You could tear the tissue paper into smaller bits and stick it down. You could use the tissue paper to scrunch up into little balls to stick down. So you will end up with a beautiful collage cross. If you'd like to do it differently, you could just cut out the cross and stick it on and have the color around it. Be as creative as you like with the materials that you've got to make a tissue paper collage cross. Have fun and let us know how you get on. Bye. So that brings us to the end of Friday on this good, good Friday. I hope you've enjoyed being with us and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Bye.